So adding and subtracting integers using the rules. The first thing that we're going to do, so step one, just like we did last week, we are going to simplify, simplify, so there's only one positive or negative sign in front of each integer. Simplify, so there is only one positive or negative sign in front of each number. I'll give you a minute to write that. Simplify so there is only one positive or negative sign in front of each number. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple examples of what I mean by that. For instance, if you had a negative 3 plus a negative 4. We have two numbers here. We have a 3 and we have a 4. Does everyone agree with that? We have a 3 and we have a 4. I want to determine, is that 3 positive or negative, and is the 4 positive or negative? We only want one sign in front of each number. So my 3, is my 3 positive or negative? It's negative. There's only one sign in front of it, so it stays there. My 4, my 4 has two signs in front of it and parentheses. So I need to simplify what is in front of my 4. When the signs are different, is it positive or negative? When the signs are different, is it positive or negative? Negative. So my 3 is negative because it had a negative sign in front of it, and my 4 is going to be negative because it had different signs in front of it. So we have simplified. That is always going to be our first step. Now, your second step, you have to make a decision on if you're going to add these two numbers or if we're going to subtract these two numbers. And here is how you know. You need to ask yourself, do they have the same sign? And I'm talking about the simplified negative 3, negative 4. Do they have the same sign? If the answer is yes, they do, then we are going to add the absolute values. So I'm just going to put add and keep the same sign. So in the example that we did above, a negative 3 and a negative 4, they did have the same sign. So we would add 3 plus 4 is 7, and we would keep the same sign, negative. They both have a negative sign, we keep the negative sign. So again, to put our example down here, we would add 3 plus 4 equals 7. Keep the same sign. They're both negative, so your answer is negative 7. So if they do not have the same sign, then we're going to subtract the two numbers. Okay, and you want to take the bigger absolute value. Do you know what I mean by absolute value? Like always positive, okay? The bigger number minus the smaller number. So we're going to subtract. And the way you decide if you're going to keep the positive or negative sign, whichever number is bigger, you keep that number's sign. So use bigger numbers sign. And we'll do examples of that kind as well. So again, I'm going to give you a minute or so to make sure you're caught up with notes before we do examples. All right, so again, we're going to start practicing now. So let's do 7 minus 11. So again, our first step is to simplify. Now, we don't have parentheses. We don't have two signs right next to each other. But let's go ahead and identify we have a 7 and we have an 11. Is this 7 positive or negative? Positive, because there's nothing out in front of it, so that must mean it's positive. And we have an 11, and is the 11 positive or negative? It's a negative, because it has that minus sign out in front of it. A minus and a negative mean the same thing. So we have a positive 7 and a negative 11. 
So we're going to ask ourselves, are the signs the same? No. So we're going to go over here to these steps. Since the signs are not the same, we're going to subtract the two numbers. Now don't do 7 minus 11. Do 11 minus 7, which is what? Try again. 4. And we're going to use the bigger number sign. Now 11 is bigger than 7. So we're going to use that symbol, which is the negative sign. So my answer is a negative 4. So again, what we did, we identified that this was a positive 7, and this minus 11, that means a negative 11. They have different signs. We have a positive 7 and a negative 11, different signs. So we are going to subtract the two numbers. 11 minus 7 is 4. And we're going to use the bigger number sign. So 11 is the bigger number. It's negative. So our answer is a negative 4. If you had $7 and you went and spent $11, you now owe somebody $4. Correct? Somebody. Whoever it is. Credit card company or somebody. Josh. We owe Josh money. What if we had negative 12 minus 9? So we have a 12 and a 9. Do you agree? A 12 and a 9. Is the 12 positive or negative? Is the 9 positive or negative? Negative. Are the signs the same? Yes. So look at your notes. When the signs are the same, we add 12 plus 9 is 21. And we add and then, what's your notes say? What do your notes say? What do your notes say? Keep the same sign. So since they're both negative, we're going to keep our answer negative as well. Think about money. If you owe somebody $12 and you go and spend another $9, now you owe somebody $21. Try another one. Sorry. Let's say we have negative 3 plus a negative 5. So, do you all agree that we have a 3 and a 5? All right, let's write down 3 and a 5. Is this 3 positive or negative? The 3 is negative, so what's out in front of the 3? It's just one symbol, there it is. Now, we have two symbols and parentheses in front of the 5. So, we need to determine, is this going to be a positive 5 or a negative 5? When the signs are different, when the signs are different, it is negative. When the signs are different, it's negative. A positive and a negative simplify to be a negative. So now we think about our rules. We have a negative 3, a negative 5. Forget about the original problem now. Just look at the negative 3 and the negative 5. Are the signs the same or different? Same. So when they are the same, we add 3 plus 5 is 8 and keep the same sign they're both negative so my answer is negative let's do one that has lots of negative signs in it negative 4 minus a negative 20 negative 4 minus a negative 20 What are my two numbers? Four, just, just four and four and 20. All right, four and 20. Is my four positive or negative? Okay. Now my 20 has two signs in front of it and parentheses. The two signs that are in front of my negative or my 20 are both negative. They're the same. So when the signs are the same, it is it positive or negative? Positive when they're the same. So forget about the original problem. Look only at your simplified version. Do they have the same sign? No. no. When they don't have the same sign, what do you do? Look at your notes. You subtract 20 minus 4 is 16. And do you, how do we know if this is a positive or negative 16? 
I'm looking at them. How do I know? Bigger number sign. The 20 is the bigger number, and it's positive. So this is a positive 16. You owe somebody $4. You make $20. You got to pay that person back, and you'd be left with $16. If money helps you, use money. If we were on a number line starting at negative 4 and moving 20 places to the right, we'd end up at a positive 16. If we had four negative signs and 20 positive signs, we'd have four pair and we'd leave with 16 positive signs. So you can do all the strategies that we've done, but the rules are, is what is gonna keep you fluent, okay? So I want you to have a little bit of time to get started on your assignment. Keep your notes handy. So again, the first thing is you simplify and then you ask yourself, are the signs the same, yes or no? And your notes tell you exactly what to do. You have to practice to get better at these or you're never going to get better, I hate to tell you.